Greetings my Doc Kids YouTube channel friends. I keep hearing about this great man of God on my Facebook ministries and on my YouTube ministries, how he is some holy enlightened prophet, a, a man uh, who speaks God's own words. Uh, he's even called a deity by many, saying that he's just uh, like the extreme uh, prophetic guru of these times, like a throwback to Elijah and Elisha and Ezekiel and the old school prophets. So I normally don't do these kind of videos. I have a channel that I used to do these kind of videos on, but I know I'm not doing what the Lord's led me to do this because this needs to be addressed and straightened out. And this video is in love. <clears throat> so disclaimer, no hate here, no hatefulness. I'm a watchman. I'm not a prophet. I'm not an apostle, as people call themselves. I had the lowliest of the lowest jobs, the most dangerous job in the Bible was the watchman. He stood on the wall. He was the first person to die when danger came. He warned those of danger. I am a Christian watchman. I warn people from the Bible what's going on to let them know what's happening. And that's what I'm doing right now, doing my job as a watch and performing it and warning you. So let's go right to scripture, then let's go ahead and talk about this prophet, and let's go ahead and get this um, whole thing figured out, shall we? Let's start with Ezekiel, uh, chapter 13, verses 1 to 3, as always, all I use is a King James Version Bible. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say thou unto them, that prophesy out of their own hearts, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 22. When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing followeth not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. And lastly, this is the big boomer right here. Deuteronomy 18, verse 20. This is God's word again, God speaking. But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Even that prophet shall die. In God's time, God's saying it's going to happen. Now, let's go ahead and go to uh, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, shall we? In the 2013 vision... He saw, he said, a vision from God. He saw a tsunami hitting Puerto Rico, great earthquakes there, and great earthquakes and tidal waves in other coastal cities, which are all vague prophecies. Jesus said in Matthew 24 that earthquakes in diverse places will be an end time sign. This is no prophecy from God. This is just generic known knowledge that it is going to happen sometime. And where's the great tsunami prophesied or the great earthquakes? They haven't happened yet, but again, we know they will happen eventually. Now, what if I had a fancy title? If I, what if I wasn't a watchman? If I was a fancy prophet or a apostle? And I told you I knew a great earthquake or tsunami would hit an island nation in the middle of an ocean. <laughs> I know eventually it would happen. Or if I told you that one day the sun will turn black, it's sackcloth, and the moon blood red. It's all biblical common sense, my friends. Now, prophets don't get a second chance. If they prophesy falsely once, God calls them false and says they shall surely die in his time and they get no second chance. So if they prophesy wrong one time, even if they do prophesy 100% the rest of the time, which they won't anyways, they're already labeled a false prophet in God's word. Now, let's go ahead and go to uh, the false prophecy at hand. The word I said above hasn't happened yet, but that's generic stuff. This is the real meat and potatoes. August, August of 2014, Mr. Rodriguez was caught in a false prophecy by declaring the death and judgment from God on Jorge Rossi. Now, I started thinking to myself, who is this Jorge Rossi? So I started checking, and th th that God will want to judge and punish and destroy and make him die. This guy is a Pentecostal preacher <laughs> from the same country, Puerto Rico, where Mr. Rodriguez lives. He is huge in evangelism, bringing lots of people in Puerto Rico to Christ. And annually, he hosts a day called Dia de Clamor a Dios, which means the day of crying to God for all people in Puerto Rico to cry out to God. Now, this is a guy that he said God wanted him to die. He said God himself told him that on 1 September that Jorge would die, and he said if it didn't happen, he would never call himself a prophet again and would never again prophesy in God's name. When the deadline came and went, what did he do? Did he stop? Of course not. He blamed God. He said it's all God's fault because God changed his mind. <laughs> and of course he continues to prophesy and tour the world 
filling his pockets with money. Now, don't try to use Jonah and Nineveh, because I'm way ahead of you. The Holy Spirit gives me insight and everything. Jonah was sent by God to judge a wicked, terrible nation of Nineveh, who was a filthy nation who had who had turned on God, did not follow him, and the entire nation was being judged. The entire nation has fasted and repented and came back to the Lord to, to God, and God decided in his mercy, the extremely rare, to go ahead and turn around and say, Tell uh, Jonah it's not going to happen. And Jonah was mad, but God had changed it. But you look in the Bible, when prophets prophets are sent to tell one person something's going to happen, you better believe it's going to happen. So don't try to use Jonah and Nineveh. It's not going to fly. I told you what the Bible says. This guy is a, is a proven false prophet. And if you follow him, you are following someone that the Bible says will surely die in God's time. Someone that God abhors false prophets. So you do what you want to do. You can go ahead and get mad at me. Like I said, this video is in love. Get mad at me and, 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 and gnash your teeth at me. I'm trying to save you from following somebody who might lead you down to the pits. The last days we live in, my friends, false prophecy, end times prophecy is a huge business. Just like in Jesus' day. They had the actual Son of God right there. But they chose the Pharisees and Sadducees right now. We have the actual living, breathing Word of God. It's a living, breathing text that's filled with the Holy Spirit. You want the Holy Spirit in your heart? You open the Bible up and you get more of the Holy Spirit. It'll jump off those pages. And what do the sheep will do? They follow false prophets and people with fancy titles like prophets, prophetesses, and apostles, etc. So, bottom line is this. The rapture is imminent. <clears throat> Any second of any day, Jesus Christ is going to break the skies. I know most of you Christians don't believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, but again, I've got all the proof. I don't tell you anything I can't prove from the Bible and a Bible topic. And I've got proof, 150 scripture and commentary that shows that the rapture is pre-tribulation and nothing else. You believe God's word or you call God a liar. If you want a copy of that, message me. Also, when the rapture happens, besides all the unsaved, most Christians will be left behind as well. After the rapture happens, not only the unsaved, but most Christians will be left behind as well because they won't repent of their sins. They're too proud. And haughty. I've got scripture again, 250 scripture and commentary from the Bible that proves you have to repent of your sins after you're saved, or you won't set foot into heaven. Message me for that. See, it all started in the Garden of Eden, and all the people are, are the Christians, most of them are believing the lie that Satan started there. He told Eve, You surely won't die if you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Eve thought they'd die physically that day. Satan knew it would be spiritual that day, and they did die spiritually that day. And God gives us all free will. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So just like Adam and Eve, we can walk away from God. No one, no one, nothing, no man, no enemy can ever remove us from God's hand once he has us there. But we're free to walk away because of free will. Or again, you have to call God a liar, one of the two. God doesn't lie. And if you're left behind, God says that if, if he didn't intervene, no flesh would survive, that men's hearts would fail them from fear. I know I talk fast. The prayer I'm about to do, I've got the same prayer in the box below the video title and some six vital next steps. Pray it as soon as I'm done and start those next steps because no one's guaranteed the next day, hour, minute, or second in their life. And also, I got my tri Tribulation Survival Guide video in the same box. It'll show you what to expect during the Tribulation and how to get saved in your last chance. So if you've never been saved or you're a backslider, let's pray now before your time runs out. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. Went back to heaven to be at the right hand side of the Father to make a place for all your children forever. Please forgive me of my sins. Wash my heart white as snow. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. Your precious name I ask it. Amen. You pray this prayer. Jesus said, All that come to me and ask shall be saved. If you'd like me to pray for you for anything, from a terminal illness to a sick pet, anything in between, contact me. I have the gift of faith, mustard seed faith. I didn't earn it or deserve it. When I prayed for it, he gave it to me. And I'll pray for you daily, knowing that God will perform a miracle in your life if it's in his holy will. And if he does, all because of him, my friends. Nothing to do with me. Keep witnessing and praying, true Christians. Tell them what the word says. If they won't listen, it's between them and God. If they don't make the rapture, or even worse, they end up in the lake of fire, it's between them and God. We've warned them. But if you're truly ready, picking up your cross daily and following Christ, repenting of your sins after you're saved, look up. Our redemption draweth nigh. We fly soon. Have a blessed day. Bye.